All right, so now we're back to uh, the trailer. Um, as long as all this is good, good and clean, that's good. Uh, you've got your new uh, hub slash disc, and uh, we're going to install it. All right, before you go and uh, install it, um, what you want to do is take your um, take your disc with some uh, parts cleaner, brake cleaner, and uh, spray the outside. Um, the reason for that is uh, you don't want to get any kind of grease oils on your new on your new uh, pads. So then, once you got it clean, you don't want to grab it with your, with your dirty mitts. Um, oh, another thing I like to do before I do that, let me show you here, is I'll take my grease gun and I'll kind of just put some grease around the edge, around the edge here, just kind of like. This. Wipe your hands off before you go to grab it, and then uh, yeah, then you got your uh, you got your rags, and we'll go ahead and put it on. So what you do here? Is you grab this. Slide it up. And just kind of, and it should go lock in. Now, here's your new greased outer bearing. Put it in the in the right way. And just kind of shake it up. Push it in there real nice, nice and good. Um, on this spindle, it's got a flat spot, and then it's round all the way around. On this washer, you can see there's a flat spot. Just match that flat spot up there. And then you uh, push that in. You put your nut on. So now you don't want to have that nut too tight because what will happen? See right there. If you have it too loose, it'll sound like that. Now, You have it too tight then it's it's not free spinning and then you'll 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 actually wear out your bearings faster so what I like to do is tighten that nut up by hand and shake it make sure you don't shake too hard your butt will fall off the jacks shake it to where it's not you know wobbling then you got your uh, lock lock ring, and what you want to do is, and, and I got a new cotter pin, but what you want to do here is look for the hole that the lock ring goes into where your cotter pin is going to go into. And what you can actually do is move this thing around until it gets to the closest one, like right there. Now, if you do tie, if you do have to move, if it doesn't match the hole inside this lock ring, and you do have to tighten that uh, to move that nut a little bit, um, don't go too much. Just, I mean, very little. Try to get it with your hand tight. You know, try to really reef on it with your hand, because um, uh, yeah, you don't want to get it too tight. So, 
Then you take your cotter pin, find the hole, put it in there like that. Okay. Get it in there like that. All right. So now that keeps it from wanting to turn. And your bolt stays in there nice and tight and your bearings in there nice and good. Then make sure you give it a good spin. It spins real easily. All right. Now all you do is you put the uh, put the uh, bearing body in and uh, the brakes and the caliper. We'll show you that next. All right, uh, I got the, this bearing body here. You can see it's different than this style, like you see on most of them. This style here, it actually has an indicator on the outside. This has an indicator on the inside. And, uh, and with these uh, fancy wheels or the uh, wheel covers like this, what ends up happening is it's just like this, and you, and you can't put that rubber cap on there. I mean, you probably could, you could mash it on there, but uh, I just I just don't like this style um, very well. In fact, uh, when I bought these, I put this in, and I pump, I started pumping grease in there, and I didn't check for operation because it was stuck, and I actually blew the uh, inner seal out. So just be careful when you're pumping grease. So, so then what I like to do is with your new bearing body. When you get it, just do just do this. Make sure it extends out and it's not stuck. Cause uh, like here's a brand new one. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, and it takes a little bit more to just pop it out. And what it may do is if it gets in there and it gets sideways and it gets cocked in there, and then you keep pumping, it's not coming out. You're like, oh man, I know I pumped about 30 pumps in there and it's not coming out. And then all of a sudden, boom, you, you blow the rear seal out, and then you have to. Pull all this stuff off and put everything back on. And that's just extra work that we don't have to do. So again here, you can use a piece of wood. Uh, I like to use 4x4. Uh, it doesn't have to be this, but if you use 2x4s and stuff, it seems to splinter. That should go like this. But uh, I like to use a four, I like to use a 4x4 when I do this. Or if you have a uh, a dead blow. Make sure it's a dead blow. Don't be using anything steel because uh, you will you will mar this up pretty good and, and and wreck it. Now if you're on the side of the road then yeah if that's all you got but something soft so what you do is you just start you just turn it and you start hitting it in Pretty much what you want to do is you want to look up on top there as you're going, but uh, as you can hear, it's, as I'm hitting it, it's really shaking the boat. That means that it's solid from here to there all the way to the boat. So just make sure that's in and you're good. And that's on there. You know, now what you can do some grease in there all right so now that you've uh you pump grease in there the thing seems to be nice and flat uh, as you pump it in there you'll kind of hear it and also you'll kind of see it coming out the front like right there uh, you pretty much want to stop there because um, you don't want to blow out that back seal like I said before 